Hello, my name is Brian Dierkman, and I will be presenting a case on primary hip labral reconstruction. Our patient is a 32-year-old male. He's an orthopedic surgery resident in his fifth year, and he'll be doing a sports medicine fellowship the following year. He's had over 10 years of right hip stiffness with very minimal to no pain at all, but more recently has started noticing significant progression of his pain. His biggest complaint though was restrictions in athletic activities like working out in the gym and squatting and exercising due to the significant and progressive stiffness. He did play college baseball and is an otherwise healthy guy. He had very minimal rest pain. He had pain up to five to six out of 10 with prolonged sitting and sit to stand and he had a very difficult time exercising as discussed due to the mechanical block. He has failed extensive conservative treatments at this point and he presents to my office. He is a 6'2", 195 pound guy with normal gait. You can see his normal left hip has 90 degrees of flexion, internal rotation of five degrees, so still limited external rotation of 50 degrees and a negative fader test. On the right hip, he very significant limitations in flexion to 75 degrees. He has obligatory external rotation and flexion to 10 degrees of external. Flexion external rotation of 30, so a very stiff hip with a positive fader and impingement testing. Here on his x-rays, he has a what we would grade as a tonus one hip with early narrowing and sclerosis and he has a relatively large osteophyte on the femoral head with some labral ossification and calcification and rim changes. You can see on his done 45 view here, you can see he has a very large cam deformity with an alpha angle over 80 degrees with significant early narrowing there with all the same labral calcification, ossification, and rim changes noted. Similar findings again on the upper right x-ray. As far as MRI goes, you can note the very large osteophyte um, that goes all the way down the posterior and then the extensive labral ossification and mineralization changes along the rim of the acetabulum. Here on the axial imaging, you can see that he has impingement changes along the head and neck junction, as well as the extensive labral changes and degeneration and maceration, frankly, as noted. And here on the coronal MRI in the far right, you can see that there is chondromalacia changes, but there's no acetabular cysts or edema noted. And again, the same previously noted extensive labral damage. So upon discussing the findings with the patient, we did discuss a myriad of options. We did discuss non-surgical management. It certainly would not be unreasonable to consider this, considering he had very minimal to mild pain. He had very early degenerative changes on x-ray. And you could argue that he could try injections and therapy and medications until he was ready for a hip replacement. He's young enough that I did not think that was a, a great option for him. And he was significantly limited, especially his complaints of not being able to exercise. Therefore, we did discuss what would some would consider the more traditional option would be a labral repair or debridement with the femoroplasty. This would definitely improve his range of motion and function, right? As again, his functional deficits were his primary complaint. His labrum does appear extensively damaged in MRI, however, with all the labral minimalization changes. We did have a long discussion about this, and I did explain to him that in my past experience, Hips such as this, the labrum will be pretty extensively damaged and there won't be very good quality tissue to repair. And I did present to him the option of a primary label reconstruction as well. With that in mind, he did elect to move forward with the primary label reconstruction. Here is his arthroscopy video at the time for the diagnostic scope. You can see here the, the extensive chondrolabral injury. You can see the mineralization and calcification within the labrum. You can see all the extensive erythema and bruising and damage to the labrum, but an otherwise healthy appearing joint with normal femoral head cartilage and a very well-maintained acetabular cartilage otherwise. We elected again to move forward with the labral reconstruction. You can see here is our video after our reconstruction. You can see I elected to use a 3.0 Suture Tech knotless anchors. I prefer this anchor for all my labral reconstructions because it's a very predictable anchor with very strong fixation. I really appreciate the knotless technology because it allows you to tension and pull the graft down to bone and compress it nicely. And once we reduce the head, you can see here that the chondrolabral seal is nicely restored. And during dynamic impingement testing, there's no longer any signs of impingement and otherwise a very successful case here where we had a very nice reshaping and a nice restoration of his normal suction seal mechanics of the hip joint. Postoperatively, you can see we reshaped his femur well with complete resection of the cam deformity and the osteophyte on the AP and the done 45 views. As far as indications, hip labral reconstruction is an evolving technique. Dr. Ben Dome and his colleagues have published extensively on this. 
in their consensus statement, essentially most surgeons would consider reconstruction in certain primary settings and definitely 100% in the revision setting. Most choose allograft and most do circumferential. In the primary setting, indications would include poor quality labral tissue, a calcified labrum, a hypoplastic labrum, or irreparable labra. In the revision setting, 100% of surgeons that were pulled would favor reconstruction over debridement. So again, there are variables that we can use for decision-making. On pre-operatively, you can use demographic data, including the age and BMI. Increasing age and BMI both will predict a more extensive damage and then possible need for labral reconstruction. On x-ray, you can know that ten- tonus one hips have more damage than tonus zero, and overcovered hips with the center edge angle over 30 would also predict more damage to the labrum. An alpha angle over 60 also with a larger cam deformity would predict more damage as well. And again, we discussed all about the labral calcification and ossification. On MRI, we also discussed the intralabral signal changes, paralabral cysts, and any acetabular cysts or edema. And intraoperative, it is very subjective. So thank you for your attention and interest in this case.